by Jude Verse number three, by way of announcement, uh, all those that have not been baptized, if you've gotten back, claimed, or you've given your life you're back to God, or first time on Sunday, on Sunday we'll have baptism, and then we also been delayed with the ordinances. So on Sunday, uh, and I'll give more specific information on Friday night, but just if you see anybody who's not here, I know some have been getting on me just saying, believe, believe, but the heater's been broke. And we've had brethren diligently trying to fix it, and everyone that came in, uh, about how many of them, but Charles? Well, we've had three electric ones that just won't heat the 500 gallon pool we have. Gotcha. So we might have to go to a gas one. Gotcha. Okay. So uh, those that do be baptized, we're going to put the water in early. We're going to try to put a little warm water in, but it might be kind of cold. Amen. But I heard in the sixth seal, they broke ice. Amen. To baptize. Amen. Believe it's the seventh seal. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, just come prepared. All those that do need to be baptized, we have quite a few. Come prepared. Be ready. On uh, Sunday, we have a mass baptism. And then uh, we got to go through the ordinances as a congregation. Um, so Sunday afternoon. So those that do help with that, those services, be ready to have the stuff all prepared, if you wouldn't mind. All right. Jude, verse number three. Beloved. Beloved. When I gave all diligence to write unto you uh -huh. of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you mm -hmm. and exhort you that you should con earnestly contend for the faith. That you should earnestly Earnestly means to put forth great effort. Come on and read. Contend for the faith. Earnestly contend for the faith. Which was the gospel, what? the truth, the faith, the word, the manner in which the operational level that the church was once on at this point. It only been a few years since then, but the prophet, the apostle. He observed, he processed, and when he was going to write and say, just be encouraged, he said, no, it's more than that. Yeah. It's more than that. I'm observing that we cannot just be a people. If we're to receive God's approval, if we're to receive the blessings of God to continue to flow, if that's what we're after, if that's what we're going to do, then it's something you must do. And I cannot, amen. See, you're in trouble if you're ever up under a gospel that is not instructing you and encouraging you to do what you need to do for the power, for the glory, for the gospel, for the presence of God. To back up and be manifested in your midst. If anything less, if there's something that needs to be dealt with, if there's a gospel standard that's been lowered, whatever it is, if you're not up under ministry that is detailing that, encourage you, breaking down the word. We're not talking about the opinions of men. We're not talking about some tradition that's no biblical foundation to it. But we're saying the word of God that is available in that dispensation. If there's anything that is below that, or the level of gospel that you've been exposed to, Amen. If God can see sense that you all, amen, used to be here, but now you're here. Or, amen, you used to walk in this amount of light, but now you're walking in this amount of light. Amen. A real man of God, a real woman of God, a real apostle, amen, they will let you know. I'm not going to tell you to be encouraged when it's some stuff you need to deal with. Right. I'm not going to tell you just to go sing a song. Amen. We're not just playing games. We're not just another church. We need the power of God manifested in the midst. We're not talking about somebody joining church. We're saying the only way that you can be a part of the body is for every spirit to be cast out every bit of sin that you've ever been involved in amen God did allow God to deliver you from all of it amen you get up from there and you walk in the newness of life that's a very high standard that cannot be duplicated in Babylon that cannot be duplicated just by theory amen you need the presence of God in the midst if somebody is bound by crack somebody's bound by heroin somebody's bound by pornography amen and they want to come give their life to God the power of God must be present all right, all right. All right. so with this being said he was saying that I wanted to encourage you but I observed some things are missing mm -hmm. there are some things that are lacking and I want to encourage you he says to earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered we started a message a few weeks back or about a week or so ago about the components of earnestly contended now mind you this is a very very critical message <coughs> Tremendous insight. This is not just being courage saints or this, that, and the other, but this is a warfare message. As the body of Christ, wherever the body of Christ is, where the body of Christ is, you're going to see this work being done. 
Let me give it to you as an overview because we don't have time to deal with every piece. Okay. The gospel day. Certain things would take place during the gospel day. The gospel day is the time that Christ ascended, Pentecost came. From that time of Christ to the time of his return, that is called the gospel day or known as the gospel day. Throughout the gospel day, the church has had to deal with various things. It talks about a great falling away. Mountain that was on fire fell into the sea. Then it talks about a beast coming up out of the sea. What? The early church on fire, but fell into the mind, the hands of unregenerated men. Political. This, that, and the other. So out of that came a beast. Out of that backslidden condition came a beast. That beast had corns, this, that, and the other, and it was Catholicism. Mm -hmm. Well, once Catholicism came up out of that and they began to uh, uh, orchestrate, they even called themselves the Church of God. If you look at the real literature and stuff like that, they said they're the church. They are the So Catholicism comes out of that with the Pope leading the church, not the word and the spirit. The word could say this, but if the Pope say this, it's what the Pope say. Serious. The spirit can say this, but if the Pope say, nope, send this cardinal over there. That cardinal don't, got a, uh, don't have a burden for Jackson. Mm. Well, I'm telling you to do it. I dictate the church. We vote, we dictate the church. So the word and the spirit, nobody should be led over a church that don't got a burden for it. That don't feel a, a calling from God for it. Okay? So here, if that's the case, if somebody said, I'm going to be a pastor, but I don't have a burden for it, I'm just going to do it because so-and-so told me to go there. That don't, that's the church of God. Church of God don't work like that. It's not about you or not, not about you. This, that, and, the other. and let me make a point because some people don't come. Listen, Brother Hampton was my father. His relationship with me had nothing to do with me here. That's right. He had six sons. He can do whatever he wanted to do. If he felt that, or I just, uh, matter of fact, he probably went the opposite because he knew the headache that it come from. He said, I'm not going to encourage you whatsoever. You got a good career, good, this, that, you can be saved, go have devotion to your church, and go, I'm not encouraged, I wouldn't encourage my, I wouldn't, unless God himself, this ain't Babylon where you get some big, pay. no, the church got to be <laughs> please, please, I make about much in a, a couple of weeks, and he didn't. He, don't, don't get me started. So this ain't nothing cute about it. Ain't nothing this, son. Amen. Only if God calls you. Amen. Only if God anoints you, because you'll mess up everything. If God don't anoint you, you won't be anointed. You won't be able. I won't see you again. Because the stuff the church gonna deal with. If you ain't anointed of God, it don't work like that. But Babylon don't operate like that. Babylon operate, well, I like this person, I like that person, that person gave a big tie. We'll do this, we'll do that, not in the church of God. Amen. No sir whatsoever. Amen. And just because even if, if, and if, and if, and if God does something, the saints should see it. Amen. It shouldn't be the saints has got to swallow something we and say, God did this. No, you don't see no signs, no one, no approval, no nothing. Don't not qualified, no, no burden, no gifting, no nothing. You just sitting not being fair. Hold on, whoa, 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 whoa. It's God's church. So out of the sea came Catholicism that said we're gonna dictate and we're gonna put that's when they put in all those prayers out of out of purgatory and all. They wanted to build the 16th chapel. They wanted to build all these uh, wealthy this, that, and the other. So they began to go to the pe poor peasants without no money, this, that, and the other. Oh, your son died? Oh, okay, won't you give us seven cows and go and five Hail Marys and say this, that, and the other? Because right now, uh, he's he's not in heaven. No, he has some sins and stuff. So you got to pray those sins off. Listen, if your son died, right. however he died, the Bible says the tree falleth, that shall it lie. That's the point of the man wants to die, and after that, the judge judgment. He's going to stand before God exactly how he lived. Yes, and ain't nothing you can do about it. The Bible said today is a day of salvation. Yes. Whatever you don't do spiritually right now, before you draw your last breath, it's too late. That's why we're saying something. Too late. Too late. It's too late. It's too late. I can't say give me a thousand dollars and I'll change the internal condition of your child. Right. If they had the Bibles and was following the Bible, they'll see. They ain't in the Bible. Amen. Amen. That's not nowhere, nowhere near scripture. Amen. So you had that and then and right after that, it talks about another beast that looked like a lamb. Uh -oh. But when you've seen the spirit that was operating, it said it was a dragon. And that was pro Protestantism. It made an image to the beast. 
originally it stood against those things, but some of the very things that they once stood against. The Bible said probably was a golden cup and God said at one point that God using this any other way, is any other, because the light of the unity of God's people wasn't here yet. However, the pieces that we're focused on is that it began to do the same thing. You join the church instead of get saved. That's man. Man can't put you in God's church. You got to get saved. You, you got to be born again. In the same way they lift up the Pope, they would lift up man. Oh, this is a church of, uh, oh, Minnow Simon. Oh, oh, John Calvin. Is, oh, Martin Luther is just, oh, oh, John West. Bruh. When the apostles, and they tried to lift the apostles up like they were somebody great, be careful of anybody that try to lift themselves up. Amen. I don't, if you ever see that spirit saying, it ain't not, it's not of God. Amen. Anybody that try to, just a little self, you'll know right away. Right. Some, I may not put my hand on it, but there's a bunch of self in you. Right. It's just everything you do is pointing to you. It's the point. Some, no, the apostles, when they tried to lift them up, like they were some, they ripped their clothes and no, 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 it wasn't me. It's not me. Give, why? I can't rob. God's glory. Amen. So here they began to lift these men up and began to have their own rules just like the Catholic Church, their own catechism, the this, that, that, so on and so forth. Well, God eventually began to raise up brother and they seen that Protestantism dividing God's people in different sects and different groups were off. So he gave the brother in the light of unity of God's people. Back in the book of Acts, they were all one. But something happened. And it took, and that's one thing, that's, it took one generation for the church to have to deal with a general apostate condition. But it took almost seven, 1,800 years to get the fullness of light back showing. God always had a people. Right. Always had a people Amen. that were walking in all the light they knew that God was blessing, that was standing against everything wrong. They had to go up under wrong. They had to do whatever. Heads cut off, this, that, and the other. But God always have a people. Yes. Don't ever, it's, it's, it's bad theology for people to say, oh, we're going to start the church of God again. What in the world, Bible, are you reading? <laughs> are you serious? For real, you think that? <laughs> okay, so anyway, uh, with that being said, God raised up a people that began to proclaim the truth of God's word con pertaining to justification, sanctification, union of God's people. And God began to restore again, build again. And God began to just move again in a mighty way, in a mighty way. They called that the dark and cloudy day during Protestantism, the dark day during Romanism, and then the dark and cloudy day during where it was a little more light, but it was still cloudy during Protestantism. But the light came in the evening light. Amen. Justification, sanctification, union of God's people, divine healing, divorce, remarriage, all the, the standards, no worldly, all that began to be established again. All right. Something happened. Go to Revelation 8, verse 1. Go to Revelation 8, verse 1. I'm sorry. Go to go to 10 first, and then we're gonna come right back to that. Keep your thumb in it. Go to Revelation 10, read verse 10. Verse. Start with verse number for time's sake. Uh, seven. Ten seven. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel. But in the days, plural, because some teach that the seventh angel is the last trumpet. He gonna blow the last trumpet like the um like when the cloud split. You know, but we know that trump, it says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, shall the last trumpet be blown. That last trumpet in the world is not going to be days long. But the seventh trumpet is a message Amen. for the seven seal ministry that's going to be preached during the time of their lifetime. That's why I say in the days 
there's some in the church of God circles that feel like there's no seventh seal, there's no seventh message, there's no this and the other. It was over in the sixth seal, we just this and the other. And they thinking that the seventh trumpet is the last trumpet when God comes. But there's a bunch of stuff that takes place after the seventh trumpet sounded. Amen. There's a bunch of stuff. It's not, oh, that's in heaven. We don't need instructions about what's going to take place in heaven. Amen. Let, me, let me take you a step further. Y'all really don't know a lot about heaven. You can't perceive it. A matter of fact, let me take you a step further. We know it is where God is. We know it, it, it's beautiful. We know that it, uh, it's in the pain. We know that. But technically what y'all think is a, or not y'all, but some people think is a bunch of stuff about heaven, gold, the street, and the jasper. Those are symbols of the church. It don't take God. God is not going to give you that level. I don't need no details about what streets in hell. This, I, I, where it is, how do I get there? I ain't got to deal with no devil. Amen. So I can come in on the right way. That's, that, that, that's all I need to know. Praise God. So the seventh trumpet is a message. All right. Let's look into it. Come on, my friend. In the days of the voice of the seventh angel. And it does say angel, but it's symbolic of the ministry collectively. It ain't never one man. Be scared of that. It's, it's, the, it's just the humility of the ministry collectively. Come on and read. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, uh -huh. when he shall begin to sound, uh -huh. the mystery of God should be finished. My Lord, yes. As he hath declared to his servant the uh -huh. prophets. Uh -huh. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake the unto me again. The understanding of prophecy shall be complete. There's aspects of prophecy that the seals before us didn't know. It hadn't been revealed. Now, it's not saying that anybody that claims to be a seven seal minister knows every note of every piece of every symbol, but it's available. Amen. It's available. The mystery is it's Well, even the six year uh, brother, uh, brother uh, I think it's Smith, wrote uh, Revelation Explained, and he put in there listen, there's some things that we don't understand, and there'll be some brethren coming. He had enough humility because he was probably the most noted. He had enough humility to say, hey, there's some other ones coming. All right. But the mystery shall be finished for the most part. Come on, read. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake uh -huh. unto me again. Yes. And said, go and take the little book. My Lord. Which is open in the hand of the, of the angel, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. Uh-huh. And I went unto the angel and said unto him. My Lord. Give me the little book. Yes. And he said unto me, mm -hmm. take it and eat it up. My Lord. And it shall make thy belly bitter. Uh-huh. But it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. My Lord, eat the book. It's going to make thy belly bitter, but in thy mouth is sweet. Light is sweet. Oh, that truth is good. You ever see like go, oh, that was so good in scripture the way you broke that down. Woo! Now go home and live it. Oh, man. Ouch. I gotta, man, I gotta clean, clean out my phone with all that nasty music on it. I gotta, it's sweet to be shouting in church, oh, thank God for truth. Praise the Lord. But when you gotta go and deal with stuff, it's a little, uh, Pray for me, brother. Pray for me, sis. Pray for me. I got to go and deal with something. <laughs> I'm about to get there. Pray for me tonight, y'all. I think we're going somewhere. Come on and read. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand uh -huh. and ate it up. Praise God. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. Uh -huh. And as soon as I had eaten it, mm -hmm. my belly was bitter. My Lord. And he said unto me, Yes. Thou must prophesy again uh -huh. before many people uh -huh. and nations and tongues and kings. So here, we've seen that took place. We've seen where the brethren came into greater light and had to implement it. And it was bitter. And you say, Brother Lee, why was it? Read verse, chapter 8, verse 1. What happened? Why do we need to go again? Come on and read. And when he opened the seventh seal, my Lord, there was a silence in heaven uh -huh. about the space of half an hour. Uh -huh. And I saw the seven angels were still before God. All right, stop right there. So here, it said when he opened the seventh seal, it was different. Yes, yes. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence. Now, some people get tremendously confused because they will say the seventh seal ain't started. They, they, okay, there's a difference between the seventh trumpet sounding and the seventh seal opening. 
It said when he had opened the seventh seal, there was a silence. So really to understand the opening of the seventh seal, you have to understand the notes that were blown in the sixth seal. And then when was there a shift? Over in Joel, don't go there. Two, it said blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm. The silence is a failure to blow and rejoice over the truths of God's word that have been revealed. So here, due to circumstances of men, you begin to have silence when it used to be clear notes. Sometimes it was due to wanting to grow to church. Sometimes it was due to pressure. Sometimes it was due to a carnal pastor's wife that want to do her own thing, that want to do this and the other, and I want to wear what I want to wear, so I'm not, I can't preach on what my wife is doing. I'm going to condemn myself. If I preach on what I'm not doing, if I preach on what my home is not doing, I'm going to condemn myself. If I preach on what I'm not living myself, either I'm a hypocrite. If I'm trying to put something on you, then I'm not living myself. If I'm trying to put something on you, I'm not producing myself. Be careful. So either I'm going to be a hypocrite and still want to blow the trumpet in which I'm not living or producing myself or I'm going to be quiet because I don't want to condemn myself. So one after another, they began to be silent. And then once they got the school in place and the school was the medium in which the ministry was sent out of because that's what happened to Brother Hampton. He was in a congregation, young brother ministering, uh, working with the congregation, uh, uh, and he hadn't had much experience preaching this, that, and the other, so he would have Brother Cameron and various ones to come in and preach for him. Well, he got more developed, more established, more this. Many of the congregation said, man, he should really, he got a, he really got, he really, he's really, he got something on him. Really, we should really consider. We should really. Well, other ones said, no, nah, we want one of them schoolboys. We want somebody from Anderson that got the credit. We want. They don't want the anointing. So they wanted that. Well, in Anderson, they began to have disputes in ministers' meetings about where do we stand on stuff? How do we feel about this? Like we're preaching on money. Don't renegotiate what God has shown you clearly. So they began to renegotiate. Okay, where about divine healing? What you mean? What about divine healing? And if, well, uh, uh, well, well, the Bible did say that uh, Luke was a physician. You're right, and he was no numbered among them. But fine, anywhere in Luke, chapter six, chapter nine, chapter twelve, chapter fourteen, all when Jesus was killing one after another, he never called for no Luke. He never called Luke one time. Study chapter fifteen, chapter seventeen, chapter nineteen. Go in the book of Acts when Luke was there. Look at chapter four, chapter nine. Look Look at the gate beautiful when they healed the lame man. They didn't call for no Luke. How are you going to bring that theology and that worldly wisdom unto the church of God ministers meeting and try to uh, legislate your way out of divine healing with some human reasoning? Yeah. If it was my God able to be understood by human reasoning, it wouldn't take faith. Yeah. Yeah. So here they begin to have these meetings and rationalize this and rationalize that, this, that, and the other, and begin to be quiet on this. And one of the main things they shifted on, on what was Babylon. They understood what Babylon was. Babylon is confusion, false religion. But then they began to want to work with them, so they began to say Babylon was a world. Shifting. But this is where the ministry was being developed at and sent out from. See, the devil worked with weapons of mass destruction. That's why God never sinks in that college. Because he knew, if I get them one place, that's like a headquarters and everybody got to be funneled through there if I just poison that one place oh pray oh I would have to deal with this congregation that congregation this congregation that congregation it'd take me a long time but if I can just get there and I can figure out a way to get influence there and get the old ministry pushed aside and have the young ministry come unproven with a philosophy, a mindset. And they saying this, that, and the other. But you know the tried and tested way that God has confirmed and God has blessed time and time again. And you want to push that aside for some new shiny thing. Unproven, untested. If you gullible, you gullible. That's on you. And one after another began. One after another. Serious, serious. So a condition. Kind of like in the dark and cloudy day. It wasn't dark, but it wasn't day. The silence was like a period in which many seen some stuff, but some of the notes was blown. There were some places walking on like that they knew, trying to hold it. But for the most part, many had began to diffuse certain notes on the trumpet. 
So now, people begin to come up in that. And they begin to say, something ain't right. And I didn't, I didn't, I'm not the reason for this, but I grew up in it. I'm walking on like that I know, but something is missed. I'm reading some verses and I read some book that we didn't used to stand for this. Then why we do this? Where did these mini skirts come? Where did this, hold on, some stuff ain't, no, some ain't right. Well, what is all this? We're, we used to trust God. Why don't we trust? Some ain't right. Well, how did this happen? What is, and they're burdening. They're saying, how, Lord, can we, Lord, can you show me? Lord, can we do this? Lord, Lord, can we do that? It might be an independent person. It might be a person that's it might be a congregation that never knew no better. I'm not talking about somebody that knew better, shifted from it. They babbling. Amen. You come out of that mess. But if it's somebody that, amen, didn't know and they came up or they've been walking all the light that they know and, and, and they've never been exposed to more and they're saying, can you help? What about this? He said, I'm going to send out. I'm going to send out individuals that can help. And that's why he said, first, that's why there's not many people that's qualified to do this work. People may say, hey, we go do missions. Hey, we're going here for a meeting. And but they may say they're not qualified. I'm sitting there like, what in the world is he saying? He said, no, they're not qualified. He said, this, oh, this country, I'm not concerned about what they're doing. They ain't going nowhere. Why? They may go somewhere and have a meeting and shout and say the other. But to produce, that's what the call is. The call is not to go and have a good time and go to the water and go and say, well, a couple people got saved. No, there is a condition here that needs to be lifted up. There's inspiration needs to go to inspire faith to believe and God must confirm it. This is a serious work. We're not just some little group. Right. Right. Just going somewhere and say, oh, oh, we had nine people here. Oh, look at all these men. Oh, they, 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 that could be ecumenicalism. Right. Don't get caught up in that in numbers. Every one of them probably teach something different than they're just doing something. Church of God, ecumenicalism. But the real work is to go help and build up. Amen. Now, what do we look for? And I'm going to make this message very succinct so we can get completed tonight. What do we look for? The Bible said man looks on the outward, but God looks on the heart. If you're going and you're looking on the outward just per se, you can end up condemning something that God didn't condemn. Or you can end up approving something that God ain't approved. It's really got to be something deeper than that. And one of the earmarks that is most essential is if a person is earnestly contending. You've heard ministry say that before. But we want to break that down so we can see what are the components of that. Let me take it a step further. A backslider could come back. Saints, they will not be accepted of God if they don't get this message tonight. It ain't about somebody just coming back to the church. But you got to come back with a certain mindset. You got to come back. See, it's not just about having church, but there's a mindset. There's a consecration that you got to come. Right. And there's components of it. Right. There are clear components. You'll be up here shouting over so and so, -and -so back, so and so back. Yeah, they came back, but God ain't accepting them. Why? Because there's components. There's an earnest contending that they need to do that they're they just happy being back. No, no, no. Let's break down just in a few moments that we have left. What are the components of earnestly contending? All right, number one is a sincere desire to be all that God would have for them, his people, or his church to be. If it's an individual, it's a sincere desire to be all. If it's a congregation, it's a sincere desire. Not just a church school, not just another church of God congregation, not, but a real serious desire deep within to be everything that God would have for them to be. Philippians 1.10. Philippians 1.10. Come on and read. That ye may approve things that are excellent. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more knowledge. And in all judgment. That ye may what, Brother Frank? Approve things that uh -huh. are excellent. That ye may approve things that are excellent. 
Come on. That ye may be sincere. Yes. And without offense. Come on. Till the day of Christ. That you be sincere. He's saying you must have this desire to approve things that are excellent. I want to be all that God. My desire is to be 100% church of God. I appreciate where I'm born. I appreciate where I was raised. But I want to be all that God would have his church to be. I don't want to play games. I don't want to just be a part of a church. I want to be all that God. I don't want to just be back. But I want to be all that God would have for me to be. I don't want to be known. When I get done, when God get done with me, you ain't going to know I have a backslid. Why? Because God going to do a work on my experience. There'll be no traces of that. I want to be all. I want to be everything. My earnest desire deep within is not just to be another saint, not just to be another church of God home. Amen. But I want my home to be everything the church of God home is supposed to be. I want my children to be raised 100% church of God. Whatever the Bible, whatever standard it is, I I don't want to bring it in my home. I don't want to make excuses. I want to be all. I want to be all. Saints, pray for me tonight. That's why the Bible said there'd be two in one row, one taking the other left. Why? Because it's going to be a few of this. You can go to 20 Church of God's congregation. It'd be few of it. Wait till I get done tonight. It's few of this. This is what God is saying. This is what God is looking for individually and collectively. A people that has a deep desire within. I'm not playing games. I'm not just co coming around here. I don't want just to sing out of Eden Lake songbook, but we want the power, we want the glory, we want the standards, we want the doctrine, we want everything that God's people is to be. If God were said it, amen. If he said it again, amen. If he said it again, amen. Hallelujah. That's our mindset. I'm not just here just to be uh, around here at church a social club. Just go, oh, how you doing? Good to see you. Let's go get somebody. No, no, no. That's not me. I enjoy going to get somebody, but that's not me. I want to be one. I ain't no legacy saint. Or oh, my grandmother was a part of this church. Or oh, my mother, she with, oh, no, no, legacy saints ain't going to make it if they, if they ain't got the same mindset that their parents had. You're not going to get in because your mother was so-and-so, your daddy was so-and-so. If you don't got the earnest desire, if you ain't got the consecration, if you ain't got the vision, then you'll be weighed in the balances and found wanting. Church of God wallflower just around here. But you got to have this mindset. Go over to 2 Corinthians 12. 2 Corinthians 2. 17. Pray for us. 2 Corinthians 2, 17. Read. For we are not as many uh -huh. which corrupt the word of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But as of sincerity. Yes, sir. But as of God. Yes, sir. In the sight of God. Yes, sir. Speak we Christ. Amen. There's a sincerity there. We're not just one. But there's a sincerity there. Now, what's the opposite of this sincerity and this earnest desire? Revelation 3. Revelation 3. Verse 14. Let's go ahead and read. And unto the angel of the church of Laodicea and write, this is the ministry, these things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. Why? Because you'll see yourself more clearly. So then, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. So here is a condition that a congregation can get in where it's just, we're just happy. There's no real desire to be all. There's no desire to add to on the foundation that we've been given. Not content with this and just talking about what happened five years ago. Or, or what happened ten years. No, 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 no. They did their part. Amen. But what's our part, Lord? What's our assignment, Lord? We would send us, Lord. What can we do, my God? Let's get some folk raised up in our generation, Lord. Lord, 